And you've talked about the regime for patients with small cell lung cancer, confined to the chest, the combination of chemotherapy with radiation. Let's talk about patients who have obvious confirmed disease beyond the chest. Is it the same regime? Is it the same kind of chemotherapy medications and, and are the doses the same? Yeah, the, the advances have actually come in the extensive stage population and, and rightfully so. These are where we test the novel drugs and when we first started testing immunotherapies, small cell was one that was earmarked as one that may actually benefit a lot because it, it tends to be related to tobacco use and other aspects. And, and frankly, it's been a little slow. Uh, there have been so many other advances in so many other tumor types, but we're finally starting to see that in patients with small cell. Uh, we do have a drug that's approved after chemotherapy, which is called nivolumab, and that has been FDA approved. Uh, what's also encouraging now is that we have, uh, under an accelerated approval sort of process uh, or accelerated prioritization, is a combination of using our traditional chemotherapy, that's a carboplatin or cisplatin with a toposide, and as adding another immunotherapy to that combination called atezolizumab. That was based on a study that's been reported last fall, and we now use that as our standard of care up front in the eligible patient population. So really the landscape of treatment has changed quite dramatically, even in very recent years for these patients. Finally. 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 And um, yes, it's great news that the outcomes are definitely improving with these newer treatments. But newer treatments often means combination therapies, radiation, chemotherapy. Now we're throwing immunotherapy in the mix. Um, let's talk about side effects in terms of just with the standard treatments right now with radiation chemotherapy. How much does radiation to your chest and chemotherapy for a lung cancer knock patients about? And do you find that some patients are just not able to tolerate even the standard treatments before we even start talking about additional newer therapies. Yeah, so if we are focusing on the limited stage population where it is a combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, when we're going for curative intent, it's usually tougher treatment. And that's why we give more of the risk because we know the benefits will be higher. It is definitely tougher to take a combination of radiation and chemotherapy than either one by themselves. Right. Uh, it leads to more fatigue. You can get uh, sort of an inflammation, uh, what we call esophagitis in your esophagus uh, that could uh, really get irritated. Your blood counts can be suppressed and you could be more susceptible to infections. And these are more of the common things that happen. But if someone is Again, watching their calories, keeping their fluid intake well, and their immune system behaves like we think it will, then most people can get through it pretty, uh, pretty nicely. Uh, you're going to be a little beat up and a little tired on the back end, but we give you a break after that. And a month is quite a long time for patients to be undergoing treatment. Are patients able to keep working during these treatments, or is it really a kind of month out plus or minus extra time at the end to recover. Quite a beating, isn't it, for patients? Yeah, they, they need a month or two afterwards. And I tell them to just go on vacation as well and do something fun. But uh, they will have to take chemotherapy a little longer than that because the four cycles with the three week per cycle will be longer than the one, one month of radiation. Uh, it is a cumulative effect. Uh, usually the first cycle in the first week is more anxiety. They're nervous, they don't know what to expect, but when they take it, it actually isn't so bad. And then when they get toward the end of the radiation, that's when the cumulative effect really occurs. And I always warn people, the first few weeks after you're done, that radiation sticks around. And so you're still going, you shouldn't feel like instantly you feel better once it's stopped. Right. Uh, I tell people if they were out in the sun in the park all day, let's say on Saturday, when would they feel the effects of all that sun exposure? Sure, sure. Sunday. Sure. And just the physical exhaustion of going backwards and forwards 
to a hospital environment every day is hugely draining for patients and their caregivers. Doctors are very stressful to a lot of people. <laughs> I, it happens all the time. So, And um, obviously we've talked about the potential side effects for patients that we discuss up front. You know, these are the risks, this is the benefit. How often do you have a patient sat in front of you where you just say, look, there's no way this patient is fit enough for either radiation or chemotherapy or both? And in that situation, what, what do they get? Yeah, it's, it's a very challenging situation. And, and certainly we can see some people who come in at a very late stage and their overall condition is that they're bed bound, they've lost weight, maybe their liver or other aspects are not working very well. Uh, those are people we have to have very frank conversations about. And we mostly go to supportive oncology with this. Uh, I think for any one of us, palliative care is a blessing because it means we're talking about it mm -hmm. and we have the opportunity to use it. Uh, in some folks who are maybe not so beat up, maybe we can start with radiation and just a little touch of chemotherapy, but we are deviating from standard therapy and that means our outcome may not be as good, but this is where you have to tailor it to the patient in sure, front of you. Sure, sure. And we're seeing patients who have lung cancer, but who also have a lot, a lot of other comorbidities. Is there anything in the patient's past medical history, you know, cardiac disease, diabetes, immunosuppression, anything else that makes you think, well, this patient has localized small cell lung cancer, which if I'm just focusing on the lung cancer, they can get A, B, and C but this medical condition is really a contraindication to either of the treatments you've discussed. Yeah, it's usually rate limiting with the radiation. If somebody has a long tobacco history and has bad emphysema, radiation damages normal lung tissue as well. And we don't wanna give somebody radiation and have them end up on two or three liters of oxygen and can't walk around right. because we've helped Trade one problem for another. That's right. Mm. And so that is one of the areas that that's an accumulated sort of side effect over time. So you have to look at the big picture. That's right. Which is why it's so important, isn't it, to have the primary care doctor involved as well, the internist, so that we can all weigh into giving our input about the patient's general health and fitness to undergo the treatments that we're offering.